So my name's uh, Ron John Narg, and I'm VP of BlackBerry App World and Intelligent Systems. I'll tell you what that means. And so as uh, Carl said, how many people have used a BlackBerry before? Right, nearly everybody. Well, we're coming back, and I'm going to talk about how we're coming back. And we've got our presentation on our tablet here, controlled by my BlackBerry. It's one uh, uh, um, aspect of how we integrate our different devices. Uh, I'm going to talk about the transition to BB10, which is our new platform for the BlackBerry service. Uh, I'll also talk about you know, where BlackBerry's at, you know, what are the monetization opportunities, what, uh, why you should even care, um, uh, and, 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 the, and the exciting things that are coming later on in the year. Uh, we will talk about specifically HTML5. We're making heavy investments in HTML5. Um, and then also, if you've got HTML5 apps, how you actually get them onto the storefront and actually generating dollars. So the main thing is we are in a transition period and transitioning to the BB10 platform. Um, that's going to be announced in a number of different ways next week in Orlando, where we have our BlackBerry World um, Conference. At that conference, for the first time, we'll be providing actual alpha developer hardware to developers to actually develop their apps on and practice running their apps on. These won't be the production devices, but these are the devices that we use internally to test our own applications to give developers a head start on actually getting their applications on the new platform. So that's that uh, next week and uh, their prizes and things. There's still time to uh, register, and that's in Orlando. So we're a week early. There's still a lot of things I can tell you about the platform, um, and, uh, but uh, major announcements coming next week. So we've been working on BlackBerry 10 for about a year and a half now, and we've been finding the building blocks to make a superlative uh, operating system and platform. The first building block is QNX, which is a real-time multitasking operating system uh, that's used in many, many different applications from uh, space vehicles, nuclear power stations, and it gives us a highly scalable environment for running applications in a multitasking uh, format. We may be able to show some demos later on. The next one is TAT, it's called the Astonishing Tribe. This is an acquisition in Sweden that allows us to give really rich, fluid uh, user interface frameworks for, for our developers that gives us a, a much more um, sparkling interface. And the final one, which is relevant to this session here, is Torch Mobile, which is a browser company um, which uh, has really upgraded our uh, browser experience. If you look at even, that's shipping in the current Blackberries, uh, which has Pinch and Zoom and uh, we we'll talk about full HTML5 uh, compatibility. And there's a number of, very large number of other ap acquisitions uh, we've made. Uh, Gist and Tunga are in the uh, PIM space. Uh, Scoreloop is in the uh, um, uh, uh, virtual currency game space. Jcut is in the video editing space. Um, uh, Databiz is in the uh, word document reading space. I myself, uh, came through an acquisition, Cellmania, which built App Store infrastructure. That's about uh, a year ago or so. And the current uh, apps, app, application delivery infrastructure on the current Blackberries uh, is uh, powered by Cellmania. And we'll be uh, delivering new, a new set uh, uh, of uh, infrastructure for the new Blackberry 10 environment um, later on. Uh, Ubitex is also uh, for multi-platform uh, mobile device management. So that works not just with um, BlackBerry devices, but also Android devices, iPhone devices as well. So let's get to basics first. Why BlackBerry in the first place? And you know, we, we see a lot of articles in the press uh, not being overly positive on why uh, you should actually use BlackBerry or develop for BlackBerry. But actually, we have no debt. Uh, we still make hundreds of millions of dollars of profit every quarter. 
uh, we have um, 77 million smartphone subscribers out there. Uh, we've connected to 650 carriers. Uh, the market, smartphone market overall, is expanding at such a wide rate. Despite the fact that we've lost some market share in the US, we're still in the top Fortune 100 growing companies. Another aspect that's unique about BlackBerry is the BBM service, BlackBerry Messenger. Uh, for those of you who haven't used BlackBerry Messenger, it's, a, it's, a, it's an IM service, and it's got a couple of unique things. One is you can send a message, uh, but unlike normal IM message, you know when uh, the, 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 per the message has actually been delivered, and you know whether the other person has read it. So that usually results in a quicker response time, because they know that you know that they've read it. Uh, and so that uh, uh, results in a quicker response time. Um, we're still growing developers on a, on a rapid uh, base. There are 75,000 apps in our um, storefront. Uh, we've had 2 billion downloads plus, 2.5 billion downloads is the latest number. Um, getting 180 million downloads a month. Uh, so in pure install base, uh, we, we hold our own. The other aspect where we, we have an advantage over the competition is carrier billing. Um, carrier billing is very important for um, two things. One is the carrier alignment story. Uh, are you in support of the carriers or are you trying to go over the top in, of them? Second, uh, in a lot of markets, people don't have credit cards, and or even in markets where you do have credit cards, it's very difficult to actually enter the credit card information into a, into a device. So essentially, um, a large portion of the market is prepaid, and so we've made a major investment on carrier billing. We'll talk about that a bit more. So just in the last quarter, uh, we're still growing very, very rapidly. The increase in number of apps increases by 20%. Uh, quarter over quarter. Um, the Playbook, which is the precursor to BlackBerry 10, which is our tablet uh, device, which I'm running this presentation from, um, uh, is generating uh, uh, a big increase in applications. The application quality is increasing. Um, much more vendors are registering to be developers on the BlackBerry platform. That's worldwide. Um, and uh, uh, again, a big advantage is connecting to the BBM service, uh, which increases virality and distribution of your applications. So, some sort of uh, myths that uh, people talk about. I mean, I think Apple just announced 600,000 apps, so we're only at 75,000 apps. One of the things that leads to, though, is discoverability issues. And so we actually find that developers, you know, in surveys that have been done, actually can make more money and get more downloads on a BlackBerry platform than can they, they can get on the, on the other platform, purely because the discovery flow is, uh, is easier on the BlackBerry platform. And the other thing is that um, we also generate more money than the, uh, on the, than the uh, more money as well as more downloads uh, versus Android and iOS um, applications. Um, so, the other thing is, looks like this picture's not showing up, but um, the thing about the numbers, 500,000 apps you hear from the Android platform, 600,000 apps on the, on the uh, 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 iOS platform. Uh, when we've done surveys, and people have done surveys, well, what do those apps actually mean? Um, on iPhone, there are 900 solitaire apps. There's 1,200 solitaire apps on Android. Um, when you actually count the numbers, remove the duplicates. You know, we're really looking at 30 to 50,000 apps. And we have duplicates too, definitely. We have, we, we have duplicates as well. But the actual count uh, that you need, we believe, uh, once you get past the top 100 apps, um, the top 10 apps are pretty much the same across all the platforms. We have Angry Birds, they have Angry Birds, we have Angry Bird Space, they have Angry Bird Space, we have, we have, we have Pandora, we have Facebook, um, we have Foursquare. Now, once you get past those apps, the actual quantity of apps 
is uh, of the order of uh, 50,000 that people actually uh, need and look at. Now, having said that, we need apps. We need more apps, and HTML5 is one of the ways to get to it. So here's where our strategy on platforms are coming, uh, is coming across. We have taken an approach to say to developers, whatever tool you're comfortable with, you can work on our platform. We have the wider set of platform tool sets that you can use than any other platform. So we can run Flash, we can run Air, we have an Android runtime, so you can put, can put most of your Android apps running on our platform. But where we're making our investments in is in HTML5 and native. HTML5, we think, gives us the quickest, fastest way to develop applications uh, at the lowest cost. The tool sets are readily available. The costs are, uh, are, are, are low or free um, that uh, you, you can use. And uh, you can also, so we're putting a, a heavy investment on uh, innovating on the HTML5 uh, framework. Um, that's not to say we're not enabling other frameworks. So there are a number of frameworks like Unity, Marmalade, uh, which we're enabling on our platform that allows us to uh, get applications quickly on our, um, on our new platform. So this is not your father's BlackBerry. Our new BlackBerry platform is going is a, I mean a deliberate investment to reduce the costs of getting apps onto, onto the uh, system. Uh, and one thing, just to come, this, this sort of dotted line, um, the HTML5, I mean, we have a legacy installed base of devices that run Java, uh, but they also run uh, HTML5. And at BlackBerry, we uh, brand our HTML5 framework as WebWorks, HTML5 WebWorks. Um, and so by doing HTML5, one has access to the existing installed base of devices from uh, BlackBerry OS 5.0 and above but also to the new platform as well. So that's a big uh, uh, um, advantage on the 18.5 framework. Um, our native Android Flash uh, typically, uh, well, Flash will uh, work on, uh, on the um, BBOS uh, devices, but uh, typically the, uh, um, they will not work on the legacy. They will work on the, the future platform. So, um, no, depending on who you are, what kind of application you're making, you're going to choose the appropriate tool set. Um, and the, uh, you know, there are a lot of developers who have got Android apps. Um, we've structured it so if you have an Android app then, uh, that is compatible with our Android runtime, then it's a simple packaging. People literally taking... Uh, uh, you know, less than an hour, they can uh, upload their application and start selling on our platform. Uh, that's a low-cost way of getting forward. Uh, Flash, there's, uh, you know, we have a license to Adobe's uh, Flash that enables uh, Flash applications, and in a similar way, applications are wrapped in uh, to create bar files that are uploaded into the storefront that can be sold. Uh, native is typically uh, for intensive gaming purposes. We've targeted uh, a, a number of uh, high computationally intensive uh, applications that are typically around the gaming area um, for BB10. And HTML5, again, as I said, the main thing is it's compatible with the existing store base and uh, the new platform as well. So let's talk about HTML5 WebWorks. So that's our, as I said, our brand name for our variant of our uh, framework for HTML5. And again, I think you've had other presentations today uh, talked about this debate between native and, uh, uh, and web experiences. Um, we believe that um, users uh, really don't care whether it's web or an application. They're expecting an icon um, and they're expecting to be able to install the application. So from the user point of view, it's transparent whether it's an HTML5 application or whether it's a native application or an Android application. Um, 
And so there are other advantages with that. Is, is in its packages and application, it can take advantage of the billing systems that we already have in the storefronts. Um, when I was working on uh, storefronts 10 years ago, um, looking at the history of mobile, uh, when we started off with WAP sites and went over to Java sites and then mobile web sites, uh, certainly one of the issues on mobile web uh, and WAP uh, was it was sometimes somewhat difficult to do the billing. Um, and in the RIM framework, um, essentially you're creating applications and you use the normal billing systems that we have in our storefront. So what are we, uh, you know, where, where, how, how is our HTML5 framework driven? I mean, we're using the WebKit engine. Um, so uh, you know, it's highly compatible with a, a number of uh, uh, existing uh, applications. Uh, we are typically uh, at the, in, the, in the top one or two or three positions in compatibility. Now you can go to html5test.com. I was just doing that just before I came here. And we were, uh, um, we, were, uh, we were number two, sometimes we're number one. Um, it goes up and down, but we're, we, there's a curve that shows the uh, rate of uh, compatibility improvement. And our, our, we're at the highest rate of uh, um, improvement. And so we are making a fairly heavy investment to ensure that uh, we have all the uh, elements, latest elements of HTML5 in our framework. We also uh, have enabled a number of the other frameworks as well, PhoneGap, now in by Cordova, um, et cetera, and um, provide support uh, on, uh, for, the, for those frameworks as well. So a number of other things that we've done that are, are new about uh, and different about our HTML5 implementation. Um, certainly, uh, you know, we have sort of, we, we have uh, location sockets. We, we have uh, a fairly uh, deep uh, um, implementation of web sockets, which means you can have a persistence connection. Uh, it's useful for like multiplayer gaming. Um, uh, you can also do uh, uh, remote control kind of applications. We're playing around with a, one of the developers outside on that. Uh, graphics, we have a canvas objects. Um, web workers, we can have multi-processing, multi different uh, threads on different experiences. So you could, for example, you could have uh, a, a thread working on the user interface and another thread on the uh, uh, calculations that one might need to do for a, for a particular application. We have one of the, uh, you know, Larry's over here, I think, but correct me if I'm wrong with the, uh, the most, um, advanced uh, WebGL uh, implementation on mobile uh, out there, um, which are very, very rich, allow you to do very, very rich uh, graphics, way ahead of our competitors in that area. Um, yeah, so tunnel tilt, we might have a demonstration later on on that, so if we uh, uh, go and show, show, show some applications that use the WebGL. Um, as I said, we use uh, enable all the other frameworks, touch enable frameworks uh, that you can use. So if you're using those frameworks already, you can uh, create applications for our platform. Uh, a number of applications uh, are, are already on the platform. Uh, some of the applications, I mean, if you already have a, a web uh, content, um, different people have implemented different ways, but typically it's easier to render to different screen sizes uh, using HTML5. Uh, some of the applications try and keep it similar to their um, uh, other HTML properties. Others try and change it to uh, uh, use some of the advantages of the actual device itself. Um, let's have a look. So let's talk about you know, how do you actually talk about getting those advantages. So you, you, know, you start off with you, the tool set you prefer, right? So either it's a framework, HTML, HTML5, JavaScript. And what we have is a platform which we call WebWorks. So you might hear this phrase called WebWorks. It's basically HTML5. Um, and it's a set of tools that uh, are powered by um, uh, the uh, native uh, capabilities where we have uh, any developer, we've developed some extensions that wrap capabilities of our 
um, handset. So this is an example of the camera where you can access the camera, drop it in one line, and uh, you can start using the camera uh, in your applications. Now, we've done a, a fairly large number of those, but a, a large number of developers have done those as well, created their own extensions, either for themselves or for putting them in a repository on GitHub. So we have a repo on uh, GitHub where people have created extensions for the um, BlackBerry uh, framework. Uh, one of the acquisitions we made um, not too long ago, maybe nine months ago, uh, was a company called Tiny Hippos. And uh, they have an application called Ripple. And what Ripple is, is an emulator for actually testing out the resultant HTML5 applications on, a, on an emulation. You can test these things on, a, on the web, of course, uh, but you won't get the emulations of the actual device-specific extensions, and that's what Ripple is for. And the whole idea is to try and basically uh, get to a position where you can actually um, uh, develop on, on Ripple, develop on your uh, desktop, and reduce the time that you need to um, uh, reduce the time that you need to actually go on the device. That's what takes development time, P putting the code between your desktop and your device and back and forth again, uh, and spend more of your time actually in the in the emulation mode. Um, we also have uh, uh, Web Inspector uh, that we can work on it. So this is like uh, sometimes new to web developers, but it's pretty important to optimize um, the applications for uh, optimum battery life, memory, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you get started and how do we make money? Um, all of these tools are available on the BlackBerry uh, website. And most of it, you can actually just start using, no registration required. And uh, you can just start developing immediately. Um, the tools you need to get on this site and the point you need to register is when you need to actually get the application on the device. Uh, so that might be for debug modes where you need to get your application signed. Again, uh, you can get a signing token. And the second part is when you actually want to deliver the application for sale on the storefront where you have to click through a um, vendor agreement. In all cases, it's free. No costs to get the uh, um, uh, signing tokens, no costs to... Uh, sell your application. Uh, the current revenue share for applications on the BlackBerry platform is 70%. Um, and we have a number of monetization uh, vehicles uh, to go through. So how do we make money? Um, essentially, it's a exercise in optimization right across the supply chain. Um, and unlike perhaps some of our competitors, we actually have people, we have teams of people who will actually interact with developers and work with you to actually optimize your chances of your application getting featured. Um, it's in our interest to help you that when developers make money, uh, we make money, we help, uh, we strengthen our platform. And um, just as a reminder, uh, the install base is sufficient to make it uh, uh, profitable. The main Monetization methods are either billing or advertising. Um, for advertising, we have our own advertising SDK components that you can use, uh, but you can use other people's. We don't prevent, prevent that. And for billing, uh, we have uh, um, numerous billing methods, credit card, PayPal, and carrier billing. Carrier billing, we're in uh, 40 carriers we're integrated with. Um, and the final part is, as I said before, is utilizing the uh, uh, share framework and writing your extensions for the share framework to use the BBM uh, viral distribution system. So if you are going to do an app, you know, what do, should you, what sort of, we talked about the install base and the new uh, platform that's coming out. You know, how should you get your application uh, optimized for the various devices? Now, the interesting thing with HTML5, you can address nearly all of the BlackBerry install base and the future base in, in, in one shot. Um, so if you look at these charts here, uh, most of the, um, both for free and uh, uh, download, 
is through, free, free and paid, is through uh, BlackBerry 5 and above and the playbook. So if you look at the playbook for paid apps, it's already like, you know, even though it's a relatively small part of our installed base, it's nearly a quarter of our sales. Um, and that's an indication of what's coming down the, uh, down the pike is, you know, the BlackBerry platform will be a true smartphone platform. And when it's viewed as that, it will get smartphone level uh, um, uh, downloads and uh, sales. Uh, and so we're seeing that as the first indicator is the playbook, which uses the QNX uh, uh, platform uh, as an indicator to the device um, uh, strength that's coming out uh, uh, this year. Um, so uh, that is the uh, way to think about the installed base. The advantage of you know, HTML5, you can actually get it on a uh, on our legacy and future platforms. Uh, we talked about different billing. Uh, carrier billing is very important. Uh, you don't have to do anything for carrier billing. That's all done by the storefront. Um, and it typically can increase uh, you know, to a 3 or 4x uh, improvement. I mean, I've seen as high as 10x, but you know, our, our corporate messaging says between 100 and 300%. Um, but the main reason is uh, people, you know, if you put credit card or PayPal, you then have to go through a set of flows to put your credentials in, your credit card numbers, and your, your IDs, and all, et cetera, et cetera. If you just do bill through carrier, it's just click, right? And that's if you're in a developed country. If you're in an undeveloped country, if you're in an emerging market, uh, you may not even have these options. A lot of the users won't, physically won't have the uh, have credit cards. Um, you also get the benefits of uh, the other billing systems we have, subscription billing, in-app billing, in-app payments. Uh, that are available for the, uh, for the, for the storefront. Um, we talked about uh, BBM Connected, which is basically, again, putting features in the application that leverage the uh, BBM uh, um, uh, virality. And at the simplest level is just tell a friend. Uh, more interesting levels are basically uh, being able to um, show, you know, change the uh, avatar or the icon for your BBM, uh, uh, um, um, kind of like the four square thing, you know, where you are, check in, to show the other people uh, what you're doing, where you're doing. Other things is like in integrating with other, we have very strong PIM capability, contacts, calendar, um, uh, messaging APIs, uh, where uh, you can have extremely deep integration uh, for those kinds of things. So, for example, you can actually put things in the inbox without actually doing that at the server level. The application can put things in your inbox. And to the user, it looks like it's been, an email's been sent, but actually it's just uh, gone through, gone through a, an application ingestion system. Um, so the final thing is, you know, how do you get featured? Um, and we all know that we have... Um, uh, you know, the, the main way to get downloads is to get, uh, um, get featured on the carousel because there's only so much real estate on the screen. Um, and we will, you know, our, we have teams of people that will talk to developers to figure out, you know, how to change your application, how to get the right images, um, how to actually monetize your application, almost business consulting type. Uh, activity to get your application uh, monetized. And you know, the, the, the storefront's available in, um, uh, in about 140 odd countries. Um, and so there's ample room to get promoted in one of those countries or many of those countries. We have different storefronts for different countries, different carriers, different handsets. Uh, so we have many, many promotional slots. So you might think, well, you know, there's only so many slots out there, and there are only, but uh, we have a deliberate policy to give developers a chance to, uh, to get, get, get their application promoted. There's a nomination process. Uh, you can nominate yourself. Anyone else can nominate you, sending an email, or and as, once you're in the developer uh, zone system, there's an interaction with our personnel. So, now we're getting to the end here. Um, we are involved on the, in the HTML5 side. We're involved in the community. 
Um, if you get there's a GitHub repository with lots of sample code, APIs um, that uh, we can we can provide. We're also uh, looking. Uh, we also open sourced um, WebWorks, um, so one can actually uh, uh, make use of it on a, on a wider basis. And uh, you know, we look at this as a, as a ecosystem effort. You know, the more uh, extensions that are done, the more people can develop on our platform and actually monetize on our platform. And again, we have an objective to increase ecosystem revenue as opposed to BlackBerry revenue from the, uh, the app ecosystem. Um, we, know that if we, we know that we need to have applications to make a strong ecosystem. So uh, there's some uh, resources. I think uh, you know, these are on our, on our website, no costs. No sign-ups to get started. It's only when you want to put it on a handset that you need to register. And finally, um, just as a reminder, we have our conference next week. And uh, you'll see a lot more. Even if you can't get to the uh, conference, uh, you should be able to see a lot of news in the press uh, about uh, our new devices and our new uh, plans around the BlackBerry 10 platform. So watch out for that, for that next week. Thank you.